So we're launching a new series today, so if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Psalm 119, and I'll, I will get there in a moment. Um, but here's the, here's the challenge, and here's the premise, and then I want to start by sharing just a little portion of my story, because it speaks to where we're going today. But uh, the challenge for the next three weeks is maybe in the form of a question, and it is, will you say yes to YNS? Will you say yes to YNS? Now, some of you are saying, like, what's YNS? Well, hang tight. I'll get there. I'll explain to what it is. But I want that question to sort of just begin to linger. Put that sucker on the rotisserie grill of your mind and begin to turn it around and let it marinate. And while you're doing that, after I graduated from college, I left. I took a business job down in Venice, Florida, and worked there for two years. Uh, it was going well, but one day while I was there, I just felt the prompting of the Spirit, and I pushed back from my desk, and out loud I asked myself this question for me and for me alone, is this really what I was created to do, and is this what you're calling me to do? And I felt the call on my life, and God said to me, no, you need to be using your life in a different way, in a full, some type of a full-time capacity with kingdom work. And so uh, that began a journey for me. I wound up back at the college where I graduated from, and I worked for them as a recruiter and in admissions for three years. And, you know, we're stubborn, and we all have our human wills, right? Even though I'd heard clearly from the Lord and knew the route I was pursuing, I just thought, what if one more time we tried this whole business thing again? And so I made some decisions and took some steps and landed a job. And it was a nice job. It was a cush job. It was a good job, and they trained me for a couple of weeks. They gave me a laptop. Uh, they gave me a nice big car allowance. We went out and bought a new car or a car with the car allowance, and the first week in, by day three, I was sick to my stomach. I literally had a knot the size of a grapefruit in my stomach, and I knew, again, like, why did I do this? This is not what I'm supposed to be doing, right? And it's just me. It's not for other people. But for me, and I, and I came home. I remember coming home. I was so sick to my stomach. I came home, and I walked in the door that day, and I told Lillian, and I said, I can't do this. And she said, what? You just left the other job? You went to all the training? You're three days on the job? We bought a car based upon the car allowance? What, you, what do you want to do? I don't know, but not this. There was some tension, and she was rightfully so, like, I don't know, freaked out. That's pretty accurate a little bit. Yeah, yeah, she's like, yeah, of course I was. And, and so I didn't know what to do, so I called a friend of mine, and I just told him my situation. I said, I've made a mistake. I took a wrong step, and I, I, don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do next, but I know it's not this. He said, well, let me pray for you, and we prayed, and the next day, he called me back. He's like, you're not going to believe this. Like, this Christian school over in Tampa just called, and their Bible teacher quit because her husband and her are moving to Texas, and it's two weeks out from school starting, and they're desperate, and they need a Bible teacher. And I was like, what? And so I took a step. And for five years, I taught middle school Bible, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Every middle school student at this Christian school came through my room, and I taught them the Bible. I went through three years of counseling for dealing time with middle school students for so long. But I'm good now. I'm healthy. I'm teasing. Middle school students, I love you. My wife will testify. I loved it. There's no middle ground with middle school students. You either love it or you hate it. That is like, that's the truth. And then, towards the end of that time, I just got a sense and a stirring, like, God, it's time to take another step. You're, you're, you're calling me. And the church that we were attending at the time and serving at at the time had an opening as a youth pa for a youth pastor. And so the pastor met me for lunch and said, hey, would you consider coming on and being the youth pastor at our church? And we talked and we prayed and we felt the Holy Spirit say, this is your next step. And so we took a step. And for three and a half years, we served... Uh, middle school and high school students at a church in Clearwater, Florida. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm smiling at my wife because she is an amazing woman and trying to cover my tracks for what I'm getting ready to say. Uh, but that was just not her gig. She did it, 
and she did it in love and served the students well, but man, that was just not her gig. I don't know how else to say it. We had a lot of sessions chatting it out. She then had three years of counseling to survive and get past what happened. <laughs> I'm teasing. It just wasn't her gig. And so God began to use her to stir in me and us to take another step. And it was like, well, well what would it look like for the next level? I don't know. A friend of ours from a church in Sarasota contacted us. We began to talk. He said, hey, we're looking for a family pastor. Oh, that's interesting. So we drove down, we talked, we interviewed, and all of a sudden we felt like the Holy Spirit saying, you have a next step. And so we took another step. Lillian was pregnant at the time. We left our family in Clearwater. We moved to Sarasota. And for about five years, we served as the family pastor and a whole host of other things that ended up falling on our plate. We learned a lot. And uh, it was an interesting season. And you know what? Towards the end of that season, God had really began to stir in us that your next step is at somewhere, someplace, sometime. We thought, perhaps in the South, in Florida, you're going to pastor a church. And then God said, yeah, surprise you. You're just going to be up in uh, Indiana, Northeast. And so an opportunity came up at Pine Hills Church over on Coldwater Road. And Lily and I came up and interviewed and talked to everybody that was here and all kinds of things, went home and eventually prayed, and God gave us a verse. I've shared this with you before, right? Call unto me, I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you do not know. He said, that's your verse. Take another step. Take a big step and go to Pine Hills Church and come to Fort Wayne, Indiana. And so you know what we did? We took the step. And it's been an amazing, amazing journey. And no, we've not had to go to any counseling because of the time of leading. I know what some of you are thinking. Again, I share, that's just like, there's so much in there. But what I'm trying to show you is, like, God was leading us. And along the way, there's always a next step. Sometimes they're big. And he asks you to move and to go and to leave a lot of things behind. And sometimes it's just a little step. And so the challenge and the title for this series is actually your next step. And so I ask you, will you say yes to your next step? Now let's turn to the scriptures. And I want to, this is our theme verse for the next three weeks. I want to pick the verse apart for a few minutes. And I just want to show you something that I think, why I think next steps are so important. Okay? Okay. Psalm 119, 133 says this, direct my footsteps according to your word. Direct my footsteps according to your word. Let no sin rule over me. It's a very short, very simple verse, and yet it's actually just profound and ripe with all types of meaning. So the psalmist here, a couple words, direct, he says. So it starts with direct. And that word in the Hebrew language literally means to bring something into order or to establish. So as we begin to think about next steps, I would propose to you they're not random. They're not just, uh, you know, just let, me, just let me pull something out of the air and whatever stuff. Maybe I'll, tell you, maybe I'll try that one. Maybe I'll try that one. No, as we're pressing into this, like we're going to echo this as our prayer for the next Three weeks, very, very particular. Lord, direct whatever my next steps are. You put them to order. You establish them. You lead them. You give direction. So it's direct, but then notice the next two words, my footsteps. So here's the deal. Your step that you have to take is for you alone. You can't take the step for someone else. Now, you taking a step may very well encourage someone else to take their step right? Like God uses us to be an influence and to, and to have an impact. And even in some of the most simplest of things, as we just are led and we take the step, that may encourage others to take theirs, but I can't take a step for you and you can't take a step for me. Why? Because it's my footsteps. Because they're your footsteps. Do you see what I'm saying? So this is both a corporate, and we're going to talk as we get towards the end too, what are a couple of even as a church-wide next steps, but at the very most personal level, these steps are yours, these steps are mine. Uh, in fact, do me a favor, humor me, right? Take a look at your feet. I'm tempted to take my shoes off, but I'm not going to. I'm not a foot guy. I just, it's just not me. But here's one thing that I do know. 
while all our feet look similar, similar, they're all very unique. So if we all march down, I was going to say the beach. We don't really have a beach close by, do we? So if we went to lake, and there's a beach at the lake with sand. Chain of lakes, there we go. Okay, is there sand on chain of lakes? Okay, all right. If we all went there, took our shoes off, and we all started walking in the sand, you know what we would find to be incredibly interesting? That no two footprints would be identical. And even the way in which we walk and which direction your feet point or your toes point, they're going to be different. The length of your toes are going to be different. Why? Because our steps are unique to our, our feet are unique to our own. So what I'm saying is, as God is directing, and the God who so beautifully knows us, down to the most, just most innermost core of our being, he has steps laid out for us to walk. And they fit you, and my steps fit me, because it's the way he's directing me, and it's the way he's directing you. So the question is, as we begin to consider this, are you going to say yes to your next steps? Because I believe he's going to show them. And then he says what? According to your word. So again, while God brings order and establishes our steps, we have, if I might, we have some beautiful guide rails or guardrails to help us begin to really consider these steps. So we're not just talking about physical steps, which, hey, maybe one of your steps will be, I just need to take better care of the temple. I need to get in shape. I need to do some stuff. That's great. Go for that. Start eating more healthy. Start working out more regularly. Start drinking more water. Whatever all these things are, that's great. But I think even more pressing in, especially with this being according to your word, these are steps that are spiritual steps that God is calling us to take. And here's what I believe. Every single person that's here today, nobody stumbled in here by accident. However you arrived here today, right? And you may be here just to honor an invitation from a friend or a family member. That's awesome. I respect you greatly for doing that. Kudos to you. But here's what I believe. Even if that's the way you came here, God has a reason and a purpose for you to hear this message today. Because he has steps for you. He has steps that he's directed and he's inviting and calling you to take. So these are, I would say, because they're according to the word, these are steps of obedience. And I'll show you this in just a moment, all right? So direct my footsteps according to your word taking your and my next steps. And then finally, he says what? Let no sin rule over me. Now, why is that attached to a passage on taking next steps, right? They're, they're not compartmentalized. Well, that doesn't have anything to do with the verse. The dude was just being random. He went off on a rabbit trail and said, oh, by the way, let no sin rule over me. No, it's very much a part of these steps right here. And I'll touch a little bit more, but the emphasis here, listen, the emphasis is that sin has the ability to hinder, redirect, or even cause me or you to not take steps. So, like in other words, like let's take the roadblocks out of the way. Let's take the hindrances out of the way. We have steps, every one of us, we have a next step to take, and our prayer is, God, while the evil one is going to try and come in and cause us for various reasons, to not take the step. Perhaps it's fear. Perhaps it's uncertainty. Perhaps it's a call of sacrifice, and we're not sure we're ready to let go of that thing or that person or that job or that money or that fill-in-the-blank, right? And so there's going to be a battle. I promise you, for some, there'll be a battle along the way to take your next step or not. So my prayer for me and my prayer for you and for us is that, Lord, as we consider and pray and investigate and think long and hard about our next steps, don't let sin rule over us. Don't let Satan keep us from taking the next steps that you're directing us to take. Why? Because they're steps of obedience. And you know what the biblical principle that I see from cover to cover in that regard is? Blessing follows obedience. Now, I'm not, I'm not proclaiming what the blessing is. That's God's response. He takes care of that. I'm not here to tell you, like, you do this, you're going to get this. What I do see biblically, though, when we take steps of obedience, there's a blessing from God from following in obedience. And so I, I think, I think, and I don't know if we can do this flippantly, but I mean this as genuine as I can because of that premise right there. As you begin to take these next steps, like, you are going to be blessed. Blessed. Even if the blessing is one of the greatest things, like Landon just walked us through the spiritual blessings that we have in the heavenly places as we experience those more, that's a blessing from God. 
Direct my steps according to your word. Let no sin rule over me. So let me just try and diagram a little bit, just for a minute or two, just to help you see, because there's, there's so many unique purposes to our steps. Um, qualifier, maybe even disclaimer. I don't like giving these, but I think it's important here. I'm an awful artist. I am. I'm terrible. That's why I have some of the people that are more creative, like pre-do the basics, and then I can just throw my stuff up there, and it doesn't look quite as bad. All right? So what we're talking about here is your next step. You're my next step. So what I see from the scriptures, and I want, there's a reason why these are here, because I think, well, let me just say, first of all, we all have steps or a step that we're supposed to take. Some of you, even as I've been talking, you've already begun to think, you may even know what that step is. Here's what, as I've prayed about it, I think there's some people, you've been wrestling with something already, you had no clue, and all of a sudden you walk in here, and I start doing this series, and you're like, who ratted me out? <laughs> like somebody knows what's going on. Like, you're right, the Holy Spirit does. Now, for others of you, like, you're just beginning to think, hmm, but for some of you, you know exactly, perhaps, what that next step is, right? It's so important because... Each one of these steps, because they're according to his word, and they are steps of what? Obedience. Correct. So they're not random. This is fun trying to write in a circle. Right? But there's movement to these steps, which I think is so important, right? Yes. Yes. That's an arrow, by the way. I told you I was awful. I'll do better on the next one. Because they're steps of obedience, every step requires some ounce of faith to be expressed. Have you ever considered that faith always leads to action? It's never just to stay in the head or the heart. Here's a great example. Sometime this week, read Hebrews 11. It's called the Great Hall of Faith. And it's all about people from the scriptures and it basically says this, by faith, Abraham did, and then it lists what they did, over and over again. Why? Because faith always, ultimately expresses itself in action. And so because these are steps, and your next step is a step of obedience, it requires faith. Well, what kind of faith? Well, faith to believe you're taking the right next step. Faith to believe that God is directing your steps. Faith to believe that even as according to Ephesians 2.10, sometime this week, read that verse, it literally says that God has already ordained good works for you and for me to walk in them. It's like there's, there's a path for us to walk in, right? And, this, and some, sometimes in the steps that we take, it requires a greater amount of faith, right? To, to leave, uh, for me, to leave a middle school teaching job and stay in the same area and then just take a step of faith to become a youth pastor at the church where we had been serving for probably 10 years already, that required some faith. But I would propose to you for us, not nearly the amount of faith it took for us to go from Sarasota and to leave everything and everybody that we knew behind and come to a place where we knew only maybe one or two people in this entire city. That was a big step of faith. So I, I don't know what, what faith will be required or what faith will, will ask of you, but I do know these are not random steps, and because they're steps of obedience, right, they will require faith to some part. So maybe part of your prayer as you're thinking about this is like, all right, Holy Spirit, show me what the next steps are. Show me what they are, but give me the faith to take the next step. Because I think perhaps for some of you, for some of you, like, he's like, okay, are you sure? You're asking me, are you sure you want this? Here we go, because I, I have this for you. This is such a beautiful thing, but it's going to require you to take a big step and to exercise some faith and trust in me. But as we do, the blessing that comes from obedience is multi-layered, but here's what I see 
happens with our steps, all right? We take the step, it requires faith, it's an act of obedience, and you know what it does for us? These steps, because they're according to the word, because they require faith, right? Because they require like an act of faith, they produce growth in our lives. They grow us, they stretch us, they strengthen us. And again, each step is according, sometimes it's a big stretch. And boy, you look back and you see, man, did I grow over that season? Or did I grow when I took that step, when I made that decision, when we, whatever, fill in the blank. And many of you could stand and testify to that right now. But here's what I believe happens because steps are all about what? Movement. Are they not? Steps move us somewhere. Like you, you parked and you got out of your car and you didn't just wander aimlessly in the parking lot for the next hour and a half. You directed your steps because they were moving you and they moved me to this place, to this moment right here. So because these steps are step of growth and they, they are about movement, what I believe happens, take a step, exercise your faith, experience the obedience and the joy that comes from being obedience, right? Being obedient, have that growth produced. And then what happens? I genuinely believe that gives us the strength and we need to take the next step. And then we take the next step and we see what it is and we take it. That almost looks like it. And that step is another step of obedience, right? So we take that step. And as we take that step, that produces growth. And we begin to find ourselves moving in the direction that God is leading us. And I would propose to you, the more we get into the rhythm of taking the steps that God directs us to and leads us in, I believe at times it's easier to see what the next step is. It's easier to begin to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and to see things in the word of God. And you begin to take a step and you take a step and you take a step. And all of a sudden you find yourself like God is moving you along your journey as he's leading you along your journey. So I think there's three key words in regards to this. And then let me throw out some potential next steps for you to consider. All right. But if you think about it, right. Hmm. All right, there's a step. So first of all, discover. Oh, maybe we can put on the third circle. Same thing, but I just want to, uh, by way of application, you discover what the step is. And I'll talk about that in a moment, the various ways you can discover. You discover what the step is. Then, it, like, like that, that doesn't complete it, right? Because then you have to do something else. You then have to hmm, decide whether or not you're going to take the step. And then you discover the step. You decide if you're going to take the step. Direct my steps according to your word. Let no sin rule over me. Then the ultimate thing to be is will you do it? Discover, decide, and then do it. Discover, decide, do it. Lord, direct my footsteps according to your word. Now, let, let me throw this out. This is so important because each one of these steps produce growth. Like this step that I take is designed to, pr to produce some element of growth in my life. So I believe this step prepares me to take this step. And this step prepares me to take what? This step. Sometimes in my own life I've discovered, and I've seen this in other people's journeys, and I want to I want to caution you and caution me. Don't try and jump from this step to this step, or perhaps five steps down the road. Why? Because we've missed all of the growth needed and necessary to prepare us for this step. Right? So I give you an example, just, just throwing this out there. Maybe for some of you, as you are praying and considering and thinking about next steps, maybe the Holy Spirit will say, you know what your next step is? You need to be baptized. Because when, when we look at the scriptures in the New Testament and we see this biblical pattern over and over again, and here's the pattern. 
Belief followed by baptism. Identity, I, I, my identity is in Christ, now I identify with Christ. I find my identity in Christ through salvation, and the next thing that I do is I publicly identify with him before my brothers and sisters. And so if there are some of you in the room, and you've not taken that step, and that's a step of obedience, right? Jesus, in his great commission, commanded, go and make disciples, baptizing them. So baptism, we've said this before around here, we don't have to pray about that. Why? Because it's an act of obedience. Just take the step. So before you start thinking about down the road, man, should I do this? Should I do this? I would say to you, if that's you, you know what your next step is? It's a step of obedience and getting baptized here at Pine Hills Church, right? Hey, guess what? We're baptizing next week. It's scheduled. We're going to baptize during the day. We're going to leave it up. We feel like we might end up baptizing at worship night as well, too. So you'll have two opportunities throughout the day. Now, you only need to be baptized once, but you have two opportunities for baptism, right? I'm not saying do the double dunk thing. No, just once, right? But, but this is important. This is so important because we need this growth. And I believe th the step of obedience, the faith that I exercise, it, it just develops a growth. And then it prepares me for this step. So by the time I get to here and God's going to ask me for this, I've grown and I've strengthened because it's been step after step and it's growth and it's growth. And I've expressed faith. I've watched him show up. I've been obedient. And it's just, it just empowers me to take the steps that I need to take. So I ask you, will you say yes to YNS? Will you say yes to your next step? So one or, let me just throw out a couple of, couple of things. Because as I was thinking about this, I wrote in my notes, and I think, I think this is accurate. If it's not, then just trash it and just forget it. But remember all the other stuff, okay? Perhaps your hardest step may be your next step. But, but I think actually the opposite of that is true too. Perhaps your easiest step will be your next step. The question is, will I take it? The question is, is it easy or hard or anywhere in between? The question is, will I take it? Will I take the next step? So here's some possible next steps. And I, the, there's only one series in 16 years of preaching here at Pine Hills that I've ever recycled, like almost in its entirety, and it's this series. I think this is the third time we've done it because it's so powerful. And every time we've just seen all kinds of step that people take throughout the body. And it's so encouraging. And it's so uplifting. And it strengthens my faith to watch you take steps. And hopefully it will strengthen your faith as you hear about others that are taking their steps. Right? So maybe for some of you, let me start here. I want to wrap this up. I'm going to take communion. And even in the communion, we see Jesus modeling this for us when we remember what he's done for us. And I'll talk about that in a quick second. Maybe for some of you, the very first step for you is a step of salvation. And that's why God brought you here today. To hear the truth that we just proclaimed truth in the songs that we sang earlier, in the reading of scripture, that Jesus Christ is the son of God sent from heaven, that Jesus Christ died on the cross, a Roman cross of crucifixion, and that he did that in place for you and in place for me as a substitute, and in so doing, he paid the absolute penalty for my sin that sin demanded. But praise God, while he died, he didn't stay dead, and that your eyes of faith would be open to believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead as he said he did, and as the scriptures proclaim, and as countless millions of people have believed and proclaimed down through the ages of history, that Jesus Christ is alive and well today, and he's in the business of not just making bad people good, he's in the business of making dead people alive. That's what salvation is. And I would invite you today for some of you, like, don't worry about any other step. You don't need to pray about anything else. Right here, right now. The Bible says today is a day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not next week, today. Why? Because you're not guaranteed tomorrow. You know that, right? I mean, the scripture says, James 4, 14, what? Do you not know that your life is a vapor? It appears for a little while and then oh, it vanishes away. Proverbs 27 says, do not boast about tomorrow for you do not know what a day may bring forth. And we saw that last week, didn't we? Diane Sturry is right here last week. Uncle Harold was here worshiping Jesus. 
He was worshiping Jesus. And he went home and was doing some yard work, and it was his time. And a neighbor found him in the yard, took him to the hospital, and a couple of days ago, he went home to be with Jesus. He didn't, he didn't know. He was planning on worship night. He was excited. He didn't know when his time was up. Brother, sister, I appeal to you. Like, you don't know when your time's up. That's why the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Don't you worry about any other step. Today, right here, right now, you profess your faith in Jesus, confess your sins, and say, I receive your salvation. Change my life. Like, this is what Jesus does, right? For some of you, it's believer's baptism. You don't have to pray about it. It's signed, sealed, delivered. It's done. You're going to do it next week. We've already got people signed up that are ready. I believe there's going to be a whole host of others because it's really the first step of obedience after salvation that we see scripturally in the New Testament. So that's, that's a step for some of you. For others, you know what? It's a simple step, but it's a profound one. Like, you just need to develop the discipline of reading the Word of God. Dave's been sharing with our staff as we're going through some essential conversations, and we'll begin to share this with the church um, soon. But when it comes to reading the Word of God, studies have shown that if we will read the Word of God consistently four times a week, you will see evidence of strong spiritual growth. For some of you, that's your commitment. I'm taking the next step, and I'm going to get into the Word, and I'm going to read the Word on a daily basis. The list goes on. For some of you, perhaps it's serving here at PHC. For some, it's just taking those next steps with the body at Pine Hills of connecting with us here and doing that. For some, hey, check this out. Maybe on the next step, maybe two or three steps down, the Holy Spirit's going to say, all right, you've been obedient here. You've watched me show up. You've grown. You've been obedient here. You've watched me show up. Guess what? It's time for you to start giving. I want to really test you now. I'm going to call you to start tithing and follow this principle and commit that holy portion to the Lord, right? And the list goes on and on. So here's what we want to do. We know that there's a myriad. We know that some people know exactly the steps they're supposed to take. Some people are praying and thinking right now. Others are like, where do I even start, right? This could be so overwhelming. We have a couple of things. First of all, it's so important people to people. So outside in the hall, you're going to find uh, some key staff, some key volunteers that are here to help to talk about serving, to talk about connecting, to talk about potential next steps. If it's getting connected here at Body Life, it's just getting connected to a particular ministry or, or, or a group, a small group together, whatever that may be, please don't hesitate to stop by there. But to help generate some thoughts and maybe some things for you to pray over, I invite you right now to take out, if you have it, I believe they're in the seat in front of you, we just have a Your Next Step card. Maybe this week you're like, I, I don't know what it is, but, but I'm going to pray, and I'm going to ask the Spirit, and I'll tell you what, I'll commit to this. I will say yes to my next step when He reveals that to me and what it is. Praise God. Like, there's great opportunity here for you. We've helped in this and provided this for you. But I think... I think if you, if you go through these questions, this will help you get to that point if you're sort of uncertain about where do we go. Direct my footsteps according to your word. Let no sin rule over me. So the word of God is our guide, and the Holy Spirit always guides us in accordance with his word, right? So first of all, here's a question for you. Do I know what my next step is? Like start there. For some of you, I think you already know what it is. Do I know? For some of you, it's like, no, but that's what I'm asking myself right now. The Holy Spirit has really begun to bring that to my mind. Then secondly, how do I discover what my next step is? Oftentimes, it's simply through prayer and the Holy Spirit, and he just imparts that on your heart. He, he brings that to mind, right? Oftentimes, it's connecting with people. Like, hey, I'm processing with this. Can you help me walk through this? I'm trying to figure out what my next step may be, but I just need somebody to process with. Again, we're going to have people out in the hall available. Staff will be visible um, in any way that we can. The Word of God, prayer, the Holy Spirit. And I believe that as we begin to really seek, God will reveal to you. Why? Because every one of us have a next step. So, again, you're not looking for something that's not already there. The answer is just reveal to my heart and to my mind what my next step is. Then thirdly, is there anything keeping me from taking my next step? Uncertainty, fear, hesitancy. After you answer that, number four, am I willing to take my next step? See, now we're really getting down to business. Am I willing 
And then finally, when will you take your next step? When will you take this step of obedience, requiring faith, but knowing that it'll produce, produce an aspect of growth in your life? And Jesus modeled this for us. That's why the communion is so, so good and so rich. So I invite you to take out the, your communion element right now. If you don't have them, I invite you to put your hand up and let us serve you uh, so you can take it. If you're engaging with us through the live stream, now would be the time to grab your elements. But Jesus came onto the scene and Jesus had next steps. In fact, I won't take time to read it, but if you read Hebrews chapter 5, I believe it's verses 7 to 10. The author says something fascinating. I want to preach on this sometime. It says that as the son, so in his humanity, it said Jesus learned obedience through his suffering. That Jesus took steps. Luke tells us after his baptism that Jesus had a next step. And it said that the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. And so he followed and he took his next step. But as Jesus was taking next steps, always before him was the cross. And so we're reminded, and I don't know about you, but I'm not only reminded, but I'm encouraged and greatly thankful that Jesus took those steps that led him all the way to death. All the way to death. And he took those steps in obedience to the Father's plan for his life, just as we will, but he took them out of love for us. And so as we take the communion today, it is with grateful hearts and it is with thankful hearts to Jesus that we say, thank you, Jesus, that you took your steps. And then as we eat, we're not only reminding ourselves and giving thanks for what he's done for us. I want to invite you and challenge you to eat as well with a prayer in your heart that says, in the same way Jesus took his next steps, I'll commit to taking mine. And I believe the Holy Spirit will show me and lead me just as he led Jesus. So Jesus, we thank you for following the plan, for following the steps that were laid out for you. Even though, though those steps led you to the cross, they led you to great suffering. Those steps also led you to triumphant victory. And so we say thank you. May we be a faithful church today as we eat the bread and drink the juice to receive what you have done for us, but to commit to follow in your steps. We pray these things in your name. Amen.